So now we continue on with our journey on constructing the spherical harmonics. This time we're going to focus on constructing YLL theta phi. So once again, we're going to make use of these three formulas. So we're going to start off with this formula. So we're dealing with the case where m is going to be equal to the value of l. And so going using this formula, first of all, let's take a look at epsilon. So epsilon is a special number that is equal to negative 1 to the power of m when m is larger or equal to 0. And in our case, m is equal to l, and l by definition is always larger than or equal to 0. l is equal to, l can take on values of 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. And all these choices, they're all positive. So it's by the nature of the Legendre polynomials, l must take on one of these values. So in any case, our m in this case, which is equal to l, must always be positive. So our epsilon is going to be equal to negative 1 to the power of l. And then we have the square root. So we have the square root of 2l plus 1, so we just write that down, divided by 4 pi. And then we have l minus m factorial. This time m is equal to l, so we have 0 factorial. And then divided by l plus m factorial, so that's just 2l factorial. So m is equal to l, so l plus l factorial. And then here for the e term, we have e to the power of i l phi. And then finally, we have the associated Legendre polynomial, so p l l cosine theta. So now we focus on deriving the associated Legendre polynomial. So what we're going to do is that we're going to find PLX first. And then after we find PLX, we'll be able to find PLL uh, of X. And then after we find PLL of X, we'll be able to find PLL cosine of theta. And we will be able to substitute this term back into this expression, which would allow us to con construct YLL. So now first we start off with plx, so let's just copy this down first. So this is our Legendre polynomial. So this is the Legendre polynomial. And then our next step is to construct the associated Legendre polynomial. So we're going to have to take this formula, so plx, and then we are going to substitute in the case where m is equal to l. So we have 1 minus x squared l over 2 and then for the here we have d dx to the power of l and then all of this is going to be applied to the Legendre polynomial plx which is this expression over here so what we're going to do is that we're going to dump this expression right into here so what that means is that first of all of course I can just pull out some of these constants they won't be affected by the uh, d dx operators over here because they're just constants so I can pull out this 2 to the power of L, and then pull out the L factorial. And then you have a ddx applied L times, and then this is going to be further applied to this ddx, which is also going to be applied L times, which is ultimately going to be applied onto x squared minus 1 to the power of L. So in total, we have 2L uh, number, uh, we have, we have, we're going to apply ddx 2L number of times, and then we're going to apply it on x squared minus 1 to the power of L. So our challenge now is to evaluate this expression. So how do we evaluate this expression? So in order to evaluate this expression, first of all, notice that we have an x squared minus 1 to the power of L. And then we know that if we expand this out, you're going to get x to the power of 2L, and then plus a whole bunch of uh, other terms. And those other terms, they will, they will have x's attached to them, and then for a final term, you're going to have a negative 1 to the power of L. And then for all the x's, x terms, their, co uh, their powers are all going to be less than 2L. So the, for all these lesser terms, the powers, the x to, uh, the powers attached to x will always be less than 2L. So what happens when you differentiate something with a power less than 2L by, uh, by 2L times? You're going to get 0, right? So just imagine if you apply d dx 3 times 2x squared. Uh, you can see that in this case, this 3 is larger than 2. And if you differentiate this too many times, this is eventually going to dwindle down to 0. And the same goes for all these lesser terms here, for this tail component of this uh, of this expansion. So if you expand this term, you have this term plus all, uh, this string of other x terms. And you know that once you differentiate this 2L times, all of these terms will go to 0. So none of them survive. So the only term that survives is the x to the power of 2L term. So that means our p l l of x is going to turn into... 1 minus x squared l over 2 divided by 
2 to the power of L, L factorial, and then we're going to apply this 2L times to this polynomial, and then we know that none of the terms of this tail component are going to survive. They're all going to dwindle down to zero. Only this term will survive. So we might as well just write x to the power of 2L. So differentiating this term 2L times is the same as differentiating just x to the power of 2L 2L times. Now this term is easy to differentiate. So if we differentiate this 2L times, what you're going to get is 2L factorial. And you can easily work this out. So if you imagine if you differentiate x to the power of n, n times, uh, you'll, you'll get nx to the power of n minus 1 if you differentiate it once and then differentiate it a second time you get n times n minus 1 x n minus 2 and so on so after you go through that uh, differentiating n times uh, eventually your coefficient is going to be equal to n n minus 1 n minus 2 all the way to 1 so what this means is that if you differentiate x to the power of n n times you're going to get n factorial and that is why if we differentiate x to the power of 2l, 2l uh, number of times, you're going to get 2l factorial, the same concept. So you can work this out one by one and you can see that there, there will be some kind of factorial behavior in the coefficients. So in the end, this whole term over here is just going to become 2l factorial. And so there we have it. This is our PLL of x. So this is our associated Legendre polynomial. So now we can, we can substitute in the cosine theta and you see that we have a 1 minus cosine squared theta, which is just sine squared theta. And the sine squared theta raised to the power of L over 2. Uh, the power is a, we have a sine square term, and then we have an L over 2. So the square will cancel out with this 2 over here. So in the end, we only have sine, sine theta to the power of L. So sine theta to the power of L. And then this will be divided by 2 to the power of L, L factorial, and then times 2L factorial. So this is the term that we're looking for. So factorial. So now we're ready to substitute this term into this expression. So what are we going to get? So let's just take this away and then let's substitute this term in. So we have a 2L factorial. We have a 2 to the power of L. We have an L factorial. And then we also have a sine theta to the power of L. And so obviously some of these terms, you can see that we can cancel them out. Uh, first of all, for this uh, 0 factorial, let's just turn this back into a 1. And then I'm going to absorb this 2L factorial inside the, inside the square root. So it becomes 2L factorial squared because you're pushing it inside a square root, so you need to square it. So this goes away, this becomes 1. And then one of these square roots, they will, uh, one of these 2L factorials, they will cancel out with this 2L factorial in the the denominator, and then you have 2L factorial times 2L plus 1 factorial. So this turns into 2L plus 1 factorial. So that's one way to simplify and combine some of the terms. And so uh, here's one way to, to group up all the terms. So I'm just going to put this L factorial here in the front. There's no nice way to deal with this. And then we have a 2L plus 1 factorial divided by 4 pi. And then you can see that we've dealt with these, we've dealt with these we've dealt with the L factorial, and then we're left with these uh, four terms over here, which are all raised to the power of L. So we might as well group them together. So we have a negative from here. We have an e to the power of i phi. Notice I took away the power of L. And then we have a 2 to the power of L, so I'm just going to put that here. And then we have a sine theta to the power of L. And then all of these terms will be raised to the power of L. So this is one way to group up all the terms together. And so there we have it. This is your answer. So this is your YLL.